I'm a prototype developer and a systemic engineer or designer. Electric vehicles is basically what I specialize in. I definitely have a lot of reasonable visions of what the future of transportation is going to be. So this is uh, the folding cargo scooter. It basically is a pickup truck for developing countries. So basically this cargo area, it stores your cargo up to 300 pounds at low center of gravity. It's incredibly easy to use and safe. So we designed it to carry a, a pretty significant load. This is a good way for people to get around, carry a lot of material. I mean, you could be carrying mattresses, you could be carrying groceries, obviously. This is basically like having a trunk, like an actual car trunk on a scooter. So the folding aspect is pretty simple. Where parking's a premium, it's really great to have a vehicle that loses its footprint. basically loses half of its footprint so you can park it anywhere. Something to look at when you go down the street. That's okay. Yeah, or into a restaurant yeah. bar. <laughs> it's easy to bring inside. It's really easy to get into an elevator, and it's cool. <laughs> so this is actually the first prototype of the cargo scooter. We just built this prototype for 250 bucks. We kind of proved its concept. So we took a lot of scooters. So we took this basic concept, and we took this Vespa, and uh, we took this $200 electric scooter that we uh, bought off Craigslist for 100 bucks, and we just kind of mash them all together. So it's kind of like the Frankenstein's monster of scooters, but uh, we developed that prototype for only 12 grand, which usually would cost most companies like 100 or $500,000 to develop. This is how we saved $50,000 is, uh, so we made a wooden mock-up of it. It's just kind of, uh, it's a little bit like this. When you have less to work with, I think that's really where creativity basically spawns and flourishes. This is a biodiesel SUV. It used to be a Land Rover. Now it is a two and a half ton, incredibly efficient truck. I grew up in Portland, Oregon. The DIY movement was huge there. The SUV craze was at its height and all my friends were making their own bicycles and bags. I decided to just DIY my own car and uh, this is it. Basically, I doubled the efficiency. It's got a huge Garrett turbo in it. It puts out 275 foot-pounds of torque at 1,400 RPMs. It gets uh, 32 miles per gallon as opposed to 15 miles per gallon before. It's a, it's a rocket ship of a uh, biodiesel. I almost died building this vehicle. I was working 15, 15 hour days, uh, six days a week. It takes a lot to start a car company. It's a massive project, but building the truck, that was probably somewhere around like 7,000 hours of time. So I guess I'm pretty much up to the task. I guess we're pioneering, arguably, we're pioneering a lot of innovation in transportation. Transportation has changed for 60 years, 60 to 90 years, depending on which vehicle you're talking about. So this is basically where it all starts. This is our prototype C1. It's just a rough sketch model. Basically, it is a self-bouncing, fully enclosed, two-wheeled vehicle that goes uh, up to 100 miles an hour, gets 220 miles per charge, it's fully electric, two-wheel drive. We took all the benefits of a car, the safety and convenience, and we took the efficiency and the romance of a motorcycle, and we just kind of put them together. So it's got a steering wheel, you drive like a car, um, but it tilts and leans like a motorcycle. The gyroscopes make it almost impossible to knock over. So the gyroscopes will be putting around 1,300 foot-pounds of torque at its full operational speed, which basically you need a baby elephant to knock over. 
when you steer the steering wheel, the vehicle tilts to the right angle. Most people are incredibly scared about of uh, motorcycles, so it's the only way that we can figure out to reduce that anxiety. It takes care of every of 90% of your daily drives. You know, 70% of most people drive alone. Uh, you don't carry more than maybe a couple groceries. There's storage behind me for actually a uh, carry-on suitcase. And then right inside, there's enough room for a suitcase. So this is our wall of iteration for, uh, for body styling, I suppose. This is somewhere around 400 different iterations. So it's, a, it's, quite, a, it's quite a process. We basically just cut the car in half. Just the fact that we chopped off two wheels really makes it incredibly easy to, uh, one, make a quick and easy iteration process, and then two, there's not as much physics we need to worry about. It's just like building a bicycle. We're re uh, drastically reducing our parts count because we're cutting the car in half, so basically a traditional vehicle, you're probably looking around somewhere around 14,000 parts. It's pretty significant amount of parts. So with our vehicle, we could reduce our parts count by a fourth of that, if not less, because it's basically a rolling iPhone. So a lot of the electronics would already be outsourced and developed. It is just like an iPhone, so you can buy apps for it. It has the same 3D accelerometer for its controls. Just like how you have a customized skin for your Gmail, you'll have a customized skin for the interior. It's going to be wired, it's going to be connected to your peers. It's kind of like a Facebook app. So each vehicle is going to have their own basic status that's going to be communicating with other vehicles over like 4G and vehicle location, what my speed is, where I'm going possibly. Basically all these vehicles, you can be connected, you can talk in the car hands-free. It's a totally different driving experience. This was kind of pretty inspiring. This is an old uh, 1950s uh, German school uh, poster for like elementary school. Yeah, I just talk, kind of talks about like how ants function, the organization of the colony, which is a lot like how like I think transportation is going to be in the future. It's going to look like a mess or chaotic, but it's being incredibly efficient. So it's like locusts; they never have a collision in air, even though there's you know millions of them. So it's basically taking a lot of precedence of biomimicry and including that in how we develop our car company. So I mean, that's this is the this is the magic of the information age. So. Ready? Yeah. So this is our conference room. It's kind of nice to get some open air and yeah, be inspired by the city. San Francisco, there's a huge amount of new precedents in the automotive industry that are kind of popping up here. You know, Tesla is here. Mission Motors, for us, it's kind of natural to be here as well. This is where it's at. And Twitter's a couple blocks over there. Uh, yeah, there's actually a lot of really big startups in this area. Did you pick San Francisco to be in? Silicon Valley and all yeah, I think I think San Francisco is basically going to be the next electric Detroit. I think there's going to, there's a lot more precedence of how transportation is going to function in like a Web 3.0 or Web squared environments. Apparently, I'm trying to do the hardware side. When I think about designing products, I only think about the necessities that you need. Like a year and a half ago, my sight was going bad, and I decided to make my own glasses. They're extremely light. They're made of titanium. Increased visibility, um, it's very little of the frame. Yeah. You kind of believe that you can DIY anything. Well, usually when you build your own car, everything else kind of seems pretty simple below that. So I kind of st try to stay within the range between glasses and, and uh, cars. This is Curly Koa. I'm building a guitar. <laughs> this is the uh, first iteration of uh, acoustic guitar. I never built a guitar before. It's a prototype. I built this basically in a couple of weeks. I'm a compulsive builder or maker of things. You gotta iterate fast and hard and fail a lot. Those failures really aren't, they're just part of the process. And it, it sounds great too, so. <laughs> no, yeah, I can, but I'm uh, shy. Eventually, after many, many, many small iterations and failures, you know, micro failures, you'll find the right formula to make the startup work. It's about commitment, it's about passion, it's a lot of hard work. It's American way, so. <laughs>